For the following exercises, find the domain of each function using interval notation and inequality and a number line if possible. All right, so first thing that we have to remember is what a domain is. All right, and a domain is simply the possible values of the input, which is x, right, that a function is allowed to have. So we what we want to do here is we want to take a look at the first function, all right, and we want to identify are there any restrictions on the variable that I can plug in here? And we realize that, ooh, we do have a square root, the variable is under the square root, and Oh, I remember that, yeah, right, right, right. That we can't take the square root of a negative value. So that is a restriction here, okay? So anytime you have a square root with a variable underneath it, you have to, you have to be aware that there is a limitation. And the limitation is that the value under here, the total value cannot be greater, excuse me, cannot be less than zero. In other words, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. I have that at the bottom here. So what we're gonna do is take whatever is under the radical, six minus two x, set it then greater than or equal to zero. All right, so now to solve this, what we have to do is subtract the six on over to the right-hand side. All right, when we do that, I'm just gonna save space. It becomes negative two x greater than or equal to negative six. And now we have to divide by negative two. Now here's the rule that generally gets forgotten. Whenever you divide an inequality by a negative value here, you have to flip the sign of the inequality. So if it was greater than, it would now become less than. If it was less than, then it would have become greater than. All right, so just keep that in mind. So let's just back, I'm just gonna save space. So now x will be less than or equal to positive three, right? Because it was a negative divided by a negative. So this is now the restriction on your domain, okay? Now that being said, we can now set up our notation. So the first thing is the interval notation, right? Remember these things that the parentheses means exclusive and the bracket means inclusive. So if you notice, x can be less than or equal to three, so it is inclusive of three, okay? So I'm gonna set it up this way x can be anything less, right? So it can literally go all the way down to negative infinity. Now I need the exclusive parenthesis here because you can't actually include infinity, all right? It's not a real number, it's, a, it's an idea. And it goes all the way then to three, but you can include three. So this would be the interval notation, all right? I'll write a little IV, uh, IN here for interval notation. Writing then the inequality from the interval is very simple. Just plug in the x in the middle, basically. Okay, so it's gonna be from negative infinity, negative infinity, that will be less than, not equal to, because you can never equal infinity, x, and that is then less than or equal to now three. Right, that is now your interval notation. Excuse me, that is now your inequality. Okay, and now what we can do is then create a number line from this. So we draw, Right, we draw a little line here with our arrows. Let's say here is uh, zero, here is going to be three. And again, this is now going to be our number line. So what I wanna do here, right, is identify that three is the important point. So I'm gonna put a little circle around it. If it includes three, fill in the circle. If it excludes three, don't fill in the circle, okay? It does include three in this problem, so I fill it in and then I shade all the way to the left-hand side uh, because we go all the way out to negative infinity on the left-hand side here. All right, so those would be the three notations. So now let's take a look at the next one. All right, let's run through this. Up, oh, we have a radical with a variable underneath it. Oh, I know there is a certain restriction that whatever is under the radical here for minus three X better be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we can do the math again. So we subtract four from both sides, right? So now we're going to get negative three X greater than or equal to negative four. And now you have to divide by the negative three, which means now that X will be less than or equal to four thirds. Okay, so this is your restriction. Easy enough. Now we can write the interval notation, right? So this is the lower bound because, excuse me, this is the upper bound because X is going to be less than or equal to uh, four thirds. So X can go all the way out to negative infinity, not inclusive of it, and go all the way up to four thirds and we can include it. So there's your interval notation. 
simply now the um, inequality will be all the way from negative infinity, all right, is less than x, which is less than or equal to 4 thirds, all right, and then, and I'm just going to move this all up a little bit, all right, and then we can draw our number line, all right, so we have our number line here, and that looks crooked, that looks crooked too, one more time, third time's the charm, there we go, and here is zero, let's say, four thirds is, I'm making it up, you know, four thirds will be somewhere out here, all right, and it includes four thirds, so fill in the circle, shade all the way then to the left. It goes all the way out to, and I should have included out here, the value of negative infinity. All right, so that takes care of that. And I just realized, I don't know how I went from uh, number one to number three here. <laughs> should have been a number two. So that sounds a little strange. Um, Okay, anyway, moving on. So now we realize we have another limitation here, but we, let, let's, we don't even have to do algebra here. We can just think about this one, right? So no matter what you plug, we know that this value has to be greater than uh, zero, right? Greater than or equal to zero. No matter though what number you put in for x squared, remember any time you square a number, x squared, whatever that is, will always be positive. Right? If you plug in two squared, that's four. If you plug in negative, and I'll put a parenthesis around the two, okay? I don't need it there, but I'm gonna illustrate something. If I were to then square a negative two, it's also four, right? So no matter what, whenever you square a number, it's always going to be positive. So if this number is always positive, and then you're adding something to that, could this ever, ever, ever be negative, ever? No, it's literally impossible, right? Even if you plugged in zero here, zero plus four is still four, right? That's the lowest value that will, you will ever obtain under the, under the radical. So therefore, there is no restriction here, okay? Don't just always assume that when you're dealing with a radical that you will have a restriction. You have to think about this thing being greater than or equal to zero. And then it takes, you know, just a little, you want to just apply some logic there. And just, you don't necessarily even have to sometimes do math. You can just think about the concept, all right? So in terms of the interval notation, right, it's going to be all, all real numbers. So we're going to go all the way from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. That's the uh, interval notation. Then doing the inequality, negative infinity is less than x, which is less than positive infinity. Last but not least, we have our number line, right? We got negative infinity out here, positive infinity out here, zero somewhere in the middle. And when we shade in our line, it's going to be the whole darn thing. All right. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and tell your friends. That'd be awesome. Take care.